going to start today off with um, just this astonishing fact that is perfect for tax day uh, and just really illustrates how screwed we are with our healthcare system. So the U.S. spends more taxpayer money on healthcare than countries with socialized medicine or single payer countries that cover everybody. So that means that we spend, we pay more in taxes for health care than Brits, the French, or the Germans. And in return for those higher tax taxes that we pay, we do not get the universal health care that all those other countries get. Fortunately, the tide is shifting on this. Um, not only are people rebuking the Ayn Rand vision of health care that the GOP was peddling a couple weeks ago, but people, yeah, right? I'm still laughing about that, like 17% public approval for that shit bill. I don't know where they thought they were going with that. Um, but they're also fed up with the status quo that's uh, just funneling money away from our actual health care and towards profits and the machinery of business, the business of health care. And last week we had one of the biggest victories that the single payer movement has seen in some time. We have a bill in the House of Representatives, H.R. 676, that would institute a national single-payer system. And last week, we hit a record number of co-sponsors for that bill. 96 co-sponsors for single-payer right now in the U.S. Congress. And Bernie's bill hasn't even dropped yet. Awesome! So, I only have one more minute left, so I'm just going to close with a personal story. Um, and also a little bit about why I got into this movement. So I'm married to a Dane. We used to live in Copenhagen, Denmark for a couple of years. <laughs> Yay, Dane. <laughs> um, and uh, down the street from me, one of my dearest friends, Anne, um, she was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. She was only 35 years old. And that woman went through hell. She went through two years of chemotherapy and radiation. But there was one hell that she was spared, and that was the hell of fighting an insurance company while also fighting for your life. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and that's because she lived in Denmark, where they provide health care as a public, as a human right, as a public service through a tax funded system. In the end, Anne kept her life. She also kept her home. And she also kept her dignity, which are things that not everybody in the United States is going to come out of if they have that same diagnosis. So after that, you know, a couple months later, my husband and I were doing our taxes, and we realized that he was bumped up into a higher tax rate. And I asked him how he felt about that. And he said, well, you know, he made some jokes about who wants to pay taxes. But what he said was that he felt so proud. Um, and he felt proud because he was able to shoulder a larger uh, part of the burden of society. In Denmark, you don't say you pay taxes to the government, you say you pay taxes to Stamfun, which is like society. And, uh, <laughs> and he knew that his, health, his dollars, his tax dollars were not going to Tomahawk missiles. He knew it was going to health care. And, uh, and for that reason, he said that he felt proud. And I don't know about you, but I've never heard anybody tell me that they were proud to be in a higher tax rate. Yeah. And it just, it struck me because I realized um, how powerful this is and the kind of society and the kind of solidarity and community we can create with a fair and just tax system that works for everybody and not just uh, for, the, for the 1%. Yeah. So I just want to say that healthcare now and the single payer movement, we are going to keep fighting and we are not going to stop. We're going to keep fighting for that vision of society and we are going to keep fighting until every health insurance company and every healthcare profiteer in the United States is out of business and healthcare belongs back to the people.